All right, so hey, here we hey. go. Hey! 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 Sasha. Hello! Welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's daily show where we show you one cool thing which we are testing out here in the PC Mag Labs. This is John Burrick. I am Sasha Segan. Uh, John told me to pop out from behind this giant AMD Threadripper! Yes, this is a giant box of um, fun in here. This is not what you will get um, in retail if you were to buy an AMD chip, but we have some new AMD chips today to show. Sasha, why don't you take the lid off? Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Okay. So, is this like a special reviewer's box or something yeah, we have here? Yeah, this is not typical what we have here. This is um, very much set up for the press, but what uh -huh. we have today are um, AMD's new Threadripper chips. So, um, August uh, 6th was the launch date for four new chips. Two of them are the chips that you've heard of before, the X series of Threadrippers, and two new ones called the WX series. What we have here is one of the X series chips. Sasha is taking it out over here. Okay, and so now it says here that this is 16 cores and 32 threads. That's right. So um, what we have in the Threadripper line that's uh, debuting today are four chips. We have uh, one at 12, one at 16, one at 24, and one at 32. Now those are gonna be hitting the market at different times during uh, 2018. This one will be coming out at the end of August and is um, known as the 2950X, 16 cores, 32 threads. How do I get this thing off? Cased in a bunch of cardboard. Yes. Yeah, so here we go. So if you were to buy one of these chips and you're presumably a high-end PC builder, upgrader, or pro content creator, you're not gonna get all this stuff. So it's extra plastic and mm -hmm. fun neon stuff here. So we're just gonna, yeah. Now want. how much How much does this processor cost? Okay, so this particular one is $899. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the new chips range up to Bring up the chart over here. Yeah, bring up the chart while yeah. I take all the frippery the off this chip. There. So uh, up to seventeen ninety nine. So the thirty two core Threadripper is what's known as the Threadripper WX twenty nine ninety twenty nine ninety WX. It's at seventeen ninety nine. Thirty two cores, sixty four threads, and this one here is half of that, mm -hmm. and is eight ninety nine. So the idea behind the really high-end ones, the 32 core and 24 core models are for extreme pro content creators who have software that really um, can take advantage of every thread now, and core. What kind of software can use a 32 core chip? I mean, mostly just pro content creation uh, software packages like Premiere or uh, DaVinci Resolve, things of that uh -huh. sort, yeah. Okay, let's 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 keep unboxing here. Now it says on the top, rip here, should we? Yep, rip away. Okay. I ripped. Right. You ripped. And now there's a little lever. Hmm, that's a good question. What we should do there. Let's give it a try. Let's give okay. it a push over. Let's yeah, we. Oh, 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 and it unlocks. Because oh, it, it's unlocked. Uh, oh, you see. Yeah, that was very clever. And now, what does yeah. that mean, chip wise, by the way, when they say it's unlocked? So, unlocked means that you can overclock the chip, and all of these Threadripper chips are completely unlocked. You can, if you have a uh, adequate cooling solution on the chip, mm -hmm. um, you know, uptick the, uh, the processor. So, um, some are, you know, some chips that you buy are, you know, locked down where you're not able to do that. But all of AMD's Ryzen and Ryzen Threadripper chips are able to do so. Okay, now, now we are, now we have this interesting kind of plastic capsule that it's right. in. Right. Yeah. So this is actually where we uh, we get a little uh, uh, careful with this. Mm -hmm. So here we have the die. So, I don't want to uh, rip the actual thread. Yeah, over. we're not actually going to touch it. I'm going to open it up here if mm -hmm. I can figure out how. Um, okay. There we go. There we go. So this is in a carrier. That so, thing is gigantic. Yeah. I mean, most uh, CPUs are about half that. And interestingly, because the Ryzen Threadrippers are made up of multiple um, dies, which are sort of what the same thing that the original uh, Ryzen's are made of, they're really just multiple dies in a single large package here. So um, you actually have four over here, and if we flip it over... Which... So do you need a special socket for this? What kind of motherboard does this work in? Right, yeah, so um, basically the uh, motherboard class that these are... Um, Part of is what's known as X399. That's the name of the chipset, and that is what the original Threadrippers and the current Threadrippers will work under. Basically, X399 has um, 4,096 pins in the socket, and you would take this chip, and I'm going to be very careful here with it, and slide it into a carrier and lock it down like this, and then a cooler goes on top of it. Now, how does this compare to the size of an Intel i9? Uh, an Intel i9 is about, um, I would say, that big, so probably an additional 40% or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. That's an estimate, but um, much bigger uh, for certain. And the Intel i9 goes to how many cores? Um, the, well, so there's an, okay, so this one here, uh -huh. the, okay, it's so a little complicated. The Intel i9s are part of a series called the Core X, and okay. those come, I believe, in um, 18 core at top, and that's the 7960XE Extreme mm -hmm. Edition. That chip runs, um, I believe that's two grand, and that's the one that is closest to the 32 core Threadripper mm -hmm. that's um, being mentioned today. This one here competes better with um, the Intel, the 
Core i9 7900X, which runs about $1,000, and I believe I would have to check the core count on that. Okay, let's see Let's see what accessories we're getting in this little uh, yeah, that Threadripper accessories box. You have a Threadripper sticker. Mm -hmm. You have a piece of information telling you to update your BIOS. Right, that is a um, screwdriver for locking down the chip on. Ah, yeah, you come with a whole bracket here, and we will take this off. It, depending on which way you um, install your Threadripper, whether with a liquid cooler or mm -hmm. with an air cooler, this is, would be for liquid cooler. You would lock this down on top of the chip. This would go on top of the motherboard and lock the liquid cooler on that. Is there However, any, yes. anything else in this box? I think there yeah. is. All right, so why don't we take that big guy out of there? Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Take this off. And okay. so we have another box in the box. And in the box in the box, we have another Threadripper branded product. Okay. All the way. Cool man. Oh boy, that's a big one. Oh, All oh right. man, that's that's that looks like an office building. All right, let's yeah. undo this from the. I got it here. You got it? it? Yeah, it's just stuck in some plastic. So basically, this is an air cooler for Threadripper, which AMD will be uh, introducing and will be branded. Um, AMD, it's called the Wraith Ripper, um, and it's kind of big. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna say. Like, we were talking about a big socket to mm -hmm. put this on. This requires a depth in your case oh, that yes. I don't think every case has. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, this is a solid, well, goodness gracious, good eight inches or thereabouts of clearance you need from uh, motherboard yeah. to outer edge. Yeah, and you're going to be mounting it, presumably, like this. So I yeah. you're going to have a big honking piece of metal here sort of hanging down and put a little bit of torque on your board. That's why you will have, you know, in any X399 board that these are compatible with, a big mm -hmm. piece of metal behind the board, so it's sort of sandwiched there. And yeah, because you're, re you're really going to want to firm up your board so that over time it doesn't warp right. with this thing attached to it. Yeah, you definitely don't want to be moving this around, you know, sort of lightly, you know, and jostling it because you have a big piece of metal hanging off mm -hmm. your board there. But basically, this is the Wraith Ripper. Let me turn it up right. Um, we don't actually have any information on this yet. Uh, AMD hasn't pronounced um, any pricing on it. We do know it will have RGBs and it will light up on mm -hmm. top, although we're not allowed to show that yet until we get it all hooked up. We're going to be working on a review of this this week, the uh, Threadripper. So are yep. you going to be building a PC based on this? Uh, yeah, we have some other parts. Yeah, we actually have a test bed that we used last year uh -huh. for our um, uh, first round of X399 chips, mm -hmm. Threadripper chips, and we'll be putting this chip in there and getting it fired up. And With this cooler? We'll be using this as well, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. let's take a question. Yes. Is this the most aggressively packaged thing you've ever seen? Uh, the last year's Threadripper was pretty much in the same sort of package, and actually it was harder to open. Sasha had a really easy time of it. Um, there was yeah. a whole big locking mechanism, and uh, you had to twist it. So I this, am the worst unboxer, though. It's, that, it's that, well was, that was creditable. I mean, okay. we, we, had no, we had no problems there, right? I mean, that was, that was pretty good. Yeah, things came out of the box. <laughs> um, so do you think there will be a difference in performance depending on uh, whether you air cool or liquid cool the chip? Um, that's a good question. That's what we'll have to find out. I suspect that if you're overclocking, yes, if you're being very aggressive about that, there's a certain limit you'll probably hit with air that you wouldn't mm -hmm. hit with water. Everything with water comes down to both the quality of your equipment and how many fans and how big a radiator you have and how quickly you can circulate mm -hmm. cooling. With this, they'll probably hit a ceiling and no more. Mm -hmm. But my thought is, is if you're a pretty aggressive overclocker, you probably aren't going to be doing it on air. That no. said, you're buying this for the most part because you're trying to get as many threads as possible. You right. probably don't need to eke out that extra 5%. Are you going to overclock it? Uh, we'll probably do some fundamental basic overclocking okay. on it, but nothing too aggressive. So let's look at, since we haven't been able to test it yet, because obviously we have not put this chip in a PC, it's not in a PC, you see, not in a PC right now. Right. Um, we have to talk about the promised performance. Right. And so let's talk about the promised performance. What we have here is... So that's the 32-core chip. Um, mm -hmm. So this is the, um, the, not the one that we have here, this is going to be a 1799 SKU that's going to be coming out um, in about a week. Um, uh, it's going to be a... August 13th. An $1,800 um, processor. Yes, well, actually, yeah, $1,800 going up against a $2,000 Intel um, 7980XE. Um, and when you look at the, uh, the various programs we have here, I mean, Cinebench, the one on the left there, closest to Sasha, is showing a pretty big bump, but that's basically because you have a lot more cores, a lot more threads that you could address, and that mm -hmm. program very much reflects that. The other programs, Pavre, uh, Corona Render, Blender, I mean, Blender being a you know, 3D rendering program, you're seeing some pretty significant upticks. You're not seeing like a one-to-one -one, um, sort of performance uptick in that you have twice as many cores, twice as much performance, but a pretty significant... But of course, what I would want to know is, so AMD is, you know, AMD is obviously trying to show their technological superiority over Intel, but what I want to know also is how this compares to 
previous generation existing Threadrippers. Right, yes, there is that. So I think that might be a little further down. I'm not sure if we have that info yet or if we're able that's to go about that. That's again, yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, 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 no, that's... Yeah, no, that's, um, that's just pure specs. Yeah, we, they have not yep, shared no. that yet. So we mm. will have to get back to you on that. And that will actually be part of our review. We have um, stats for what we got from last year's Threadripper. And as a matter of fact, last year's Threadripper, the 1950X, mm -hmm. which this is sort of the successor to, is actually um, available pretty aggressively this week, I noticed, mm -hmm. on Newegg and other places for about $650. So. Now, if people don't want to necessarily build their own PCs, who do you think is going to start offering PCs with this chipset in there? Uh, that's a good question. Um, we found that with the first generation Threadripper, it was um, exclusive to Alienware. Alienware uh -huh. did a, um, a version of its Area 51 big triangular PC, which contained uh, one of the Threadripper chips. But for the most part, these have been more around the boutique vendors, so the boutique vendors might be able to build one for you, but mm -hmm. in terms of large-scale uh, big OEMs, you're, we haven't seen much Threadripper adoption. Let's take another question. Does this have turbo like the Intel chips do? Yes, it does, yeah. Um, but if, as a matter of fact, we bring up that chart over there, you can take a look at the various um, cores. Yeah, if you scroll up a little bit. Okay. Um, let's see, maybe the other way. Yeah, I got it. Okay, it was in here. Ah. So you got boost and base, fre um, boost and base frequencies over here. The base frequencies are either three or three and a half, depending on whether you're talking about the upper class or the lower class of chips, and all of them boost either four two, four three, or four four. Now, when you're talking about a CPU this powerful, where do the other bottlenecks start to show up in uh, in your desktop PC? Where are you going to have to raise the quality of other components to match the capabilities of this chip? Right. So there's a, that's a pretty complicated question. In that, um, if you're talking about, for instance, gaming, I mean, with these chips, you run into issues sometimes with the Ryzen chips and the Threadripper chips of if you're gaming with a high-end video card at a relatively low resolution, sometimes the CPU becomes a bottleneck mm. and there need to be um, adjustments made for that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the um, speed of the RAM can come into effect there. Um, and for the most part, um, it's around gaming where there's been okay. an issue with these chips. Because just as a, as a media person, I keep thinking around like high frame rate 4K or even 8K video production. Right. Um, I imagine like the, the, the speed of your RAM and the speed of your SSD would become Well, relevant. SSD, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. If you're buying a, a system like this, chances are you're going to be outfitting it with massive amounts of flash memory, you mm -hmm. know, in terms of SSD storage. And that, of course, you know, would be one place you wouldn't want to skimp if you were building a media production machine mm -hmm. with one of these things. Um, in terms of RAM, RAM mostly comes into effect with gaming, mm -hmm. um, but in this case, um, you're probably going to be building a system, if you're building a system around this or buying a system around this, that's already kitted out pretty mm -hmm. aggressively. So you're going to be doing a probably M2 SSD based on the PCI Express mm -hmm. um, bus and um, at least 16 to 32 gigs of RAM. Okay. Let's take another question. What runs more efficiently, a bigger processor running below max or a smaller processor running near max? Hmm. That's kind of a loaded question, and it really depends on the two processors in, in, um, you know, in play. It's kind of hard to answer that sort of with a blanket statement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay, so, um, so this chip itself is, as you said, about $900 for this particular Yeah, 8 dollars for this SKU, yeah. And how much should you expect a full system, including this chip, uh, to start at? What's the range? That's a good question. I'd have to do some uh, sort of napkin math to figure it out, but you're looking at at least 900 bucks for that, well, you're looking at 900 bucks for that chip, at least three to 400 for a motherboard, minimum of 200, and somebody should hopefully tally this off off, off camera, um, 200 for the RAM, um, probably at least 200 for a basic SSD, plus you probably want a hard drive, so we're getting, you know, we're getting up in the high, you know, yeah, 2,000. Yeah, yeah, about. yeah, we're definitely, we're definitely right. above two. Right, and then case, power supply, and then video card, because these things do not have built-in video. This is a CPU yeah. only, unlike some of the uh, mm -hmm. and like mainstream some of the Intel chips. Right, yeah. yeah. Some of the, uh, AM a few of the AMD Ryzens that uh, are on the market now have basic integrated mm -hmm. graphics, as do all the mainstream Intels, but the Ryzen, main, I guess the main part of Ryzen's the Ryzen line, all the Threadrippers mm -hmm. and Intel's Core X, which is their high-end consumer stuff, is all no graphics, bring your own card. It's funny, uh, we, were, we were joking before the show how ages ago there used to be this adage that the computer you want costs 3000 Mm -hmm. And uh, we're looking at this, and as we're adding up yeah. these numbers, we're getting pretty much the computer you want costs three thousand dollars. Yep, two grand. You add another two to three hundred dollars for a um, power supply, another yeah. hundred to two hundred for a decent case, and then a video card. If you go all out mm -hmm. and get some like ten eighty Ti, that's going to be got... about seven eight hundred bucks. So yep, yeah, you're your... three grand. Yeah, yeah, then you have your you know your twenty bucks for your LED lights. Oh, that of course. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'm thinking that if you're putting together a system from scratch, that's probably the baseline that you're looking at—two to three grand minimum to do mm -hmm. anything to do anything that would do a chip like this. Uh, 
credit. Okay, great, great. So, uh, so this processor, what are the next steps here? When are we going to start hearing more about it? When are, when are people going to be able to actually get in their hands? Okay, so the, it's complicated in terms of the four chips that are coming out. If you actually look on the board behind us here, there's a staggered um, release schedule for them. The 32-core uh, one, which is not the one we have here, um, will be releasing on uh, Monday, a week from today. Um, the one that we do have here will be releasing at the end of August, last day of August. Pre-orders starting today, by the way. And then the other two, the 24 and 12, sort of the in-betweener uh, chips in the, uh, in the line are going to be October. So those are a ways out. So we're going to be working on reviewing this, this, uh, this one this week, and we'll have some stuff up as soon as we can. Okay, terrific. Any more questions out there? All set. No, great. Okay, so uh, this is... Uh, the unboxing and uh, the unboxing and discussion of the new AMD Ryzen Threadripper chip, uh, part of a quartet of new Threadrippers that will be available throughout the summer and fall. We're going to build a PC based on this chip, and then we are going to test that PC, and then we're going to tell you how well this chip does. Thank you all for watching. This has been one cool thing. If you are watching us on Facebook, please come back tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern. We always have another cool thing. It is almost always in a different uh, technology category. So if chips aren't your thing, uh, come on back. If chips are your thing, then maybe we'll be talking about chips again. I don't even know until that morning. And then if you are on YouTube, please like and subscribe. We have a new one cool thing every day. Thanks a lot.